you can't put that the hell he's in. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, yes I saw I heard what he said. Um, the lime and pizzeria. I forget how long it's been since I was that, so that's all we can do right now because we did the white well said. Good concern. Let's go. There we go. 
All right. Hello. Hey, how you all meeting to order? Uh, good evening and welcome to the public hearing scheduled January 3rd, 2023. This is a public hearing being held by the select board to present information and to allow for public comment on the article questions to be voted on at a special town meeting scheduled January 28th. Uh, January 18th. Sorry. Before uh, we begin, I'd like to start off addressing some general housekeeping. Uh, during the public hearing, the board will first present some general information regarding the article questions, and afterwards, the floor will be open uh, to public comment. During public comment, public members will be called upon by the board, so as each individual who wishes to participate may have an opportunity uh, to do so. When called upon, please step up to the podium, uh, state your name and the, and the street you reside on. We ask that audience members uh, be respectful when a public member is addressing the board and uh, keep all side conversations out of the public hearing. Uh, any individuals being continuously disruptive may be asked to leave uh, the public hearing. <clears throat> Thank you uh, all for attending tonight's meeting. The board will begin with a brief presentation of the article questions, and then afterwards, uh, we'll take questions and comments. <clears throat> uh, do we start with the article? Choose a moderator. Well, yeah, the front article is always just choose the moderator. Yep. Uh, article question number two. Uh, this article is voted at the annual town meeting to allow the board to sell tax acquired property by process of sealed bid or by auction. This article question will include an additional option of sales process to be real estate broker and include the sale of town owned properties in addition to tax acquired property. Town owned property is defined only as properties that are no longer purposeful, purposeful for municipal, municipal use. I hear a lot of beeps and nervous. We all good, Lynn? Okay. Rusty, can you hear me? <coughs> I can. Um, I have a partial report here if you'd like me to read it in regards to uh, that article. Yep, please do, Dave. Go ahead. <coughs> so uh, this report is not complete. Um, but as of today, we've identified 37 parcels of land for potential future projects if needed for the town growth. Um, five lots uh, for potential fire and or public safety. One of these fives can also be uh, used uh, for a future DPW. Um, one lot for a potential snowmobile and or recreational clubhouse. Uh, three of the lots were unbuildable. 12 of them were landlocked. That is a total of 21 parcels with 16 left to look at. Uh, we feel that some of these identified, unidentified lands should be identified for potential future growth uh, for but not limited to uh, school, elderly housing, affordable housing, a town owned gravel pit, uh, and, uh, and other suggestions that one may have. I would also like to discuss with the rest of the board having right of ways on most, if not all, of these properties, uh, whether we keep them or whether we sell them, uh, for recreational use. In some cases, <clears throat> excuse me, they may not lead anywhere, but we should start and support a local trail system for all activities. Um, that's that's all I have. So far there, I, I really got to dig into the rest. Um, but as for the concern about using a broker for the sale of the town owned real estate, I'm not sure how it will not be transparent. Uh, the town would hire a broker that has the ability to do a market analysis for any and all parcels that the board deems worthy to sell. Uh, this market analysis would bring the most that the market prices would bear at the time. Uh, the board would vote on the price to sell before it is listed. In my experience with brokers, 
uh, they are and have been the most ethical of trades. I understand why you might feel a certain select board has not been totally upfront or transparent with their decisions, but with that, in my opinion, is in the past and has been rectified. We are one of a five person board. No one member will be deciding anything on their own. Uh, I hope these answers and some of the questions and concerns, uh, but let's open it up to additional questions and concerns that uh, anybody else may have. Back to you, Rusty. Yep. Yeah, all right. Oh, uh, we'll just go ahead and open it up for this one, just for article question two. Um, if anybody has any, yeah. So, anybody have any comments or concerns? Brian, sorry, I didn't see you, Brian. Thank you. Brian, too long. I don't like the words any town land in there. Uh, well, obviously, because the Snowmobile Club is on one of those parcels of land, we put a lot of time and effort, and a lot of people have put a lot of time and effort into that clubhouse. And I don't feel the town should be selling that piece of land off. Um, I think selling off a lot of the land in Lyman is not the it's not the time for it we're going to grow eventually we're going to need money that property is going to be worth a lot more later on and then we could use those assets at that time um, that's just my feelings on it thanks Yeah, no, no, that's all good. Now we know. Hope it's off in the eye. Any other questions? Yeah, Brian, you have your hand up. Yeah, you have your hand up. Does a broker have to go with the highest price? I'm sorry, is that yeah. question addressed to me? Uh, no, go, Dave, you got the, the answer, board, but the board of five. Yeah, you got to yeah. you got to come up it's here, please. Here. Just so everybody understands, we're trying a new microphone system out here, obviously, and this is the only uh, mic that's uh, live for the podium. So people will we're having. Does a broker have to go with the highest price? The 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 broker will uh, uh, present to the board any and all um offers okay uh, but they're going to do a market analysis first the board will agree to a price and as far as i'm concerned you know a price not to uh, go below if you get more great uh but th there should be a, a a limit to what the town is going to uh how cheap the town is going to sell it i, I think we should maximize uh, whatever real estate we have to put for uh, any infrastructure projects that uh, can hopefully keep some of the tax base down. It's kind of a yes or no question. Does the broker have to go with the, the highest price or can the broker take a lower price over a higher price? No, because the ultimate decision is, is the term. The ultimate decision, they would they don't they, they don't take anything they, they they'll take an offer and then they present it to the board and we're paying them correct uh, that would be a there would be a fee absolutely i don't know how any of it works so these are why i'm asking these questions well the, the fee uh, brian is is i'm sure you do know um is at, you know it is access to their database it's access to their customers it's access to their uh, professionalism and, and uh, marketing skills. So it's it's usually a win-win when you deal with a broker. Are they getting a percentage of the sale price? That's usually how it happens, yep. But they don't have to necessarily take the highest bid. 
you know, I'm not sure race. why you keep saying that. It's a, it's there's a market us. analysis done, and it's before the board, and say this lot is worth $80,000, and a $79,000 uh, offer comes in, and an $81,000 offer comes in. The board is going to vote to take the $81,000 offer. One would hope. In an auction, there's no, there's no bias. bias at all. It's the highest bid. Whoever gives up the highest bid gets it. And what if the highest bid doesn't re doesn't attain your goals? You can set a reserve. Nope. That's fine, but it doesn't reach the amount of people that a broker can reach. Right. Dave, sorry. Dave Long, uh, Chapel Shows, right? Uh, I just have a question. How are you going to choose the broker? Nobody's thought about that yet. That's a discussion that the board's going to have. Do we want to try and yeah, I was going to. You were around when we did cousin school, remember, Rusty? I, what we did I wasn't. was we put out an RFP for brokers. Bro different brokers applied, and we took what seemed like the most advantageous deal for the town. So, by the way we do business, as far as I'm concerned, we be required to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a Is that for the cousin school, John, you're referring to? Yes. I yeah. don't see why we wouldn't do it that, that right. way. Right, right. So, yeah. so that's yeah. the answer. You're going to have an RFP and yeah. it's going to be a competitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. right. Sue Briggs, South Waterboro Road. Um, the contract with the real estate broker was added to this. I don't believe that it is was in the charter that we all voted on. But with a sealed bid or public auction, there's transparency because the public has the ability to view those sealed bids and or to attend that public auction and see who's bidding on the property. With a real estate broker, we're not going to have that opportunity because they're going to give you that offer, on, or they're going to give the board that offer on the phone. Maybe they'll give it to you in writing. They're going to say, you know, Joe down the street, he made an offer on that $80,000 property of $81,000. We're never going to see that. We're not going to see the paperwork. We're not going to see anything the way, the way a real estate agent would work, whereas with a sealed bid or public auction, we as the townspeople who own that land are going to see the results of those two performances. Rusty. That's the only reason I'm not in favor of contact contracting with a real estate broker. John, do you want to chime in? Yeah. Um, the only reason I'm familiar is because we went through that process before with Cousins. The way it has to be handled the same way as opening any bid. The real estate broker would come back with offers. We'd have to vote publicly on the offer. That's the only way we can do business. So um, I understand your skepticism. Um, but having been through it at Cousins, it, I thought that worked pretty clean and was fairly transparent. Um, I figure you're protected by your RFP going out to the brokers. Yeah. Again, that'll be a meeting. You'll be able to see anybody interested will be able to see the whole process. Any of 
the office coming in. You got seven days, should be posted, should be on the meeting, discussing offices on such and such properties. So you should have a seven day, excuse me, a seven day window um, to, to, to see it. Um, I think you've got your protections in place. Um, I understand a sealed bid. I, I think they, a sealed bid makes a lot of sense for used equipment, um, stuff that's not worth a lot. But I mean, you're potentially dealing with pieces of property in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, hopefully. If that's the case, paying for the advertising and getting a wider, wider advertising should be advantageous. But I do very much respect your concerns. Well, and my, my other question, John, I respect that answer, but my other question is what are we raising money for? Are we in need of money? Are we going to put this towards the town hall expansion? Are we going to put this towards some road project? Is there an absolute need to sell off these pieces of property at this time? When the land prices are, obviously, they've risen, but they're all starting to drop. Not to say that they're not going to rise again. The only, the only, thing, the only thing you've got committed right now is the 60000 we promised the cemetery committee. Right. Okay, we've got that. Um, the other part of that is you, everybody overwhelmingly voted for the charter and a new town manager. That means an expansion on this building. So at that point, that's inevitable. That expansion, agree with it or not, is coming. Um I just think it would have been good in this article to explain why and what the potential use of that money is, because I don't think a lot of people are yeah. going to understand that. I agree and with I, you. You've got I, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of land. You know? I don't think we're there yet. And so well, I think, it, what, what, I think I what think we've... when you're there, that's when you sell the property. Right now... But we don't know what we have. We, I think we're, we're, we're in the discovery uh, phase right now. And, you know, Dave and Brad, you know, they've been going out looking at the property, see where this property is, you know, make sure our records are right with, uh, you know, uh, with the town documents and then have a system in place that we can start, you know, moving forward. And I think that's what we're, what we're trying to do is just try to get to, to right the ship, if you will, instead of it always guessing. And I think that's what, what we had a list. And now we're going over the list, just make sure it's right. And then, you know, this proposal, if we, we can go out and, and, the, and the people agree that we can go out and, and get a broker, what we'll do. I don't see us selling any land like tomorrow. Well, um, but I mean, I, if this is approved, you guys have the authority to go ahead and do it. Well, yeah. So, you don't think you're going to be standing people, in front of us? So, so the townspeople really need to know number one. What, we're, what are we raising money for? Number two, is it important that we do this right now? Should this just be a look-see, kind of an article, to give you the authority to go look at the properties and consider what the list is? Right now, there's a list. One of those big items is the Snowmobile Club, Tom. <coughs> you know that, know because when that. I was on the Snowmobile Club and on the membership committee, you approached the town, got a lease, went ahead. There's a lot of money involved there. There's probably $20,000. I don't know, because the night I asked you that, you shut me down. But anyways, regardless of that, there's got to be twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in whatever the value of that building is. But I don't see anything in this that says, you know, the owner of the property or the leasee of the property or somebody who's got rights to that building is going to get any anything back. I mean, I, I just think that this needs to be thought about a little bit better before it goes to an article. That's my opinion. Thanks. 
Yeah, you, you brought up the, the the way the cousin school was sold. Uh, you were on board, you were on the board, and I was on the board. I remember how it was done. The, Who's talking? Dave Dulong. You didn't recognize my voice? No, it's hard. It's hard. Okay. Uh, the real estate agent was used to do a market analysis and to advertise. If you remember correctly, there was still a sealed bid auction, and we sat That's here right. and opened those bids. That's right. Right there. That's right. So it was not given to the real estate agent to actually do the sales. Right. They did the market analysis. They did the advertising, yeah. but it was still required to be sealed bidding. And I believe sealed bidding is the way to go. Thanks, Tim. And I personally believe that um, the town lost out on a lot of money on that school. So I think using a real estate agent to do a market analysis and then present offers coming in, you're going to know what's high and you're going to know what's low. And it doesn't mean that you have to sell it. Roger Roy, I live in Lyman, most of the people probably know me. On those bids, I don't know if I heard right or not, you still have the rights to refuse any bids. It doesn't, you, you're not obliged to take the highest bid. Um, so if this guy bids high, this guy bids low, he's still more able, capable of getting that bid. Is that what you were saying? For RFPs. For RFPs, yes, on the real estate group. It's RFP. A request for proposal. Okay. What it is, the only difference between a bid and an RFP is a bid, you spell out the specs 100%. An RFP is a request for proposal. This is the job we want to do or, the, or, 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 or the, what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. We would like you to propose to us the best way you think you can do it for the price, <clears throat> for a specified price or this price you're offering. Um, that's the, the RFP is just the way we choose a broker. Uh, and then the broker would come in with offers. I guess I didn't make myself clear. Okay. Once the offers are there, you have the right to choose any offer you want, or you have to pick the highest offer. That's, that's what I thought I heard over there. You had a choice. Do you? Or you take the highest offer no matter what? I, I, in my, I, I'm one person on the board. I want the highest offer. And so board votes on it, though. Ask them. I'm asking. I don't think we've set it up yet. I think it's how we, how we would set it. I mean, I've never been through this before, so I wasn't part of this. I would think we it's all on how we set up the parameters for this. I don't think there's any state law that says we you know black and white that we have to do it a certain way so you know with your your questions we can take that all into consideration yeah i guess my my question reasoning for my question was if you didn't like this guy and you like this guy better well uh, personality wise this is what i was getting at. oh okay yeah i i i'm thinking more if somebody comes in on an eighty thousand uh, dollar piece of property somebody has 60 and they, you know we like somebody likes this guy oh go give us it. no you can't do that but i mean we'd have to face you folks you they know they did that enough for them you don't do they had a bit of fifty thousand you take a bit of fifteen thousand well that, that's why we would have to set with. the parameters yeah. to, so that does not happen and the other question is i know you guys are aiming around the snowmobile club thinking of selling that property. I feel that club is very important to the town. It should be kept the way it is. It keeps the people together, keeps the roads open together. These guys come across my land, they take care of the land. They're very, very polite in what they're doing. And I think that club is, is the social gathering, keeping the people together, the groups together. And I don't think it should be looked at to try to sell. 
I mean, you mentioned you have a lot of other land to sell. I can see in towards there that's not being used for anything. But that plot is very important to the people. I am. I, but yeah. there's nobody that knows that better than me. And as Sue said, you know, I was the one that, I mean, <coughs> Morris St. Clair is the one that found the piece of property. And, you know, there is a lease. And there's there's a language in the lease to and uh, to um, to uh, what, what how did you call it, call it? it was to uh, end the lease for certain reasons there, there there are things in there but everybody kind of took this that you know we're doing this to to take the snowmobile club out of uh, commission and I uh, I disagree 110 percent on that. Uh, I probably work harder, and, and Mr. Owls probably worked harder than anybody in setting up that, that snowmobile club when we uh, first uh, brought it to the town. Um, you know, I, I myself spent eight hours from White Rocks uh, School with the state police escort bringing that, that whole building all the way down here, me, myself, and I. Yeah. So I understand, I understand but I, I just... The, the social media that goes out there that says we're trying to take the snowmobile club out, that's not, the, it's just part of the of the inventory of town land. Yeah, well, I was just thinking that how important that really is. It shouldn't, it should, how the land should be looked at first, not this club. This club, you, you diminish the club, you lose the trails, you, you weaken the people in the town. Yep. You know, you know like I say, I, I see people coming across like, my property and they kind of hesitate and I'm over there, you know, go for it. I'm a, I like sportsmen yep. and I think that club really needs to stay there. Is there anything you can do about getting us some snow? I can make some snow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have to say. The club meeting is very important. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Roger. Dave. <coughs> Why don't you just sit up here, Dave? <laughs> Good. I have. Uh, just, I just want to clarify that the, the reason that some of us might be under the mistaken idea that you all want to get the snowmobile club gone is because you refuse to renew the lease. If you just renew the lease, that would be off the table. <clears throat> Josh Eon, Old Ben Davis Road. Um, so I'm actually surrounded by two of the pieces you guys are actually selling. Um, my question is, is there any, would you guys ever sell the pieces to like groups, I guess? You know, if, if someone comes in with an offer for, hey, I'll buy six of those pieces at these, you know, is it is that anything you would ever, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you have like someone come in, say a broker, I'm trying to basically get to the bottom of uh, whether or not the whole bias, the bias opinion. So if you have someone that comes in and says, hey, I want to offer you guys $60,000 a piece for these three lots, and each lot is worth $80,000, right? But then you have people looking in and say, I'll give you the $80,000, $80,000, $80,000. Well, if that person's going to buy all six of those lots comes in, they're in line with the what Lyman wants to do. Then you have all these other individuals that aren't really in line with you know how lemon wants to proceed down the road would you guys favor someone like that over someone that you see what you see what i'm saying i'm just trying to hmm. understand the bias or like if there's any bias or how we can prevent bias using this broker you know what i mean that's my question i mean yeah. i don't well, know i i don't <laughs> I, I can speak honestly for myself and once again as we say one, i'm one of five i i have no bias mm -hmm. i you know i I, once again, I think it's how we set this up, but we, we're we talking a lot of money and a lot of land, and it is owned by the town and the town's people, and why would we want to try to do something that is controversial and have everybody upset with us right. uh, when we're trying to change that, you know, and uh, so I, I just, I, once again, it's all in how it's set up, and there'll be more to come. You know, this is just the beginning of it, and you know, and it's once again, it's looking at everything, the, the whole, uh, the whole, uh, whole list. Is that yeah? I mean, give me some confidence. That's giving me a little bit of confidence. Um, I mean, my next question is, if 
you guys are just trying to work us as a town, not you guys, us as a town. If we're just trying to figure out, okay, what we have, we're trying to do like assessments and figure out what the fair market value is for these lots. Would it be smarter to maybe just pose, Hey, we're going to hire a brokerage account, a broker, real estate broker to basically get appraisals done. And then if we find it warranted to sell certain pieces to fund projects, we're going to sell these three lots this year for these, you know, this, you know what I'm saying? Instead of saying, you know, we have access to sell all these lots. Cause I think that's pretty scary for some of these people. It's like, okay, well, you know, you know, you give them the keys to all the lots, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know, I know you guys aren't planning on doing that, yeah. but you know how these things go. It's like, once the gates open and it's voted on, it's like, okay, like you have to assume the worst because once, you know, once the power is handed over at, you guys can do what you want. You know what I mean? At that point. Sure. So it's, would it be smart just because I, I, you know, I wouldn't, let's just see what these lots are all worth. Let's, you know, and then you say, okay, well, the expansion is going to cost hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's two lots. Let's sell these two lots. See what we can get for them. Okay. Now we did the expansion. But you still have money in the bank because you have 20 lots left. So now this other lot, you know, you need a new fire station or you need, you know, let's sell these four lots. Maybe they're worth even more down the road. But maybe, I don't know, maybe rewording it to just do some kind of brokerage appraisal and then vote on, okay, well, these lots all came at this and let's, we're going to sell these four lots. Or I don't know. I don't even know if that makes sense. I'm just saying it might be an idea to kind of help kind of. You know, it would take probably the snowmobile off the, you know, the snowmobile club off the uh, table at some point, you know, and it probably ease people's, I don't know, concerns a little bit. At least it would ease mine. But just because, what do you have, 30, is it 33 lots? Is that, how many lots do you have on the list? Dave. Right now there's 37 parcels. Yeah. 21 parcels have been identified for, you know, potential what have you. Yeah. And the snowmobile club is one of them. Yeah, so I, I know I know this, you know, there wants to be a, a big controversy, but there really isn't. We, we're just trying to put down and be thorough so that we can put it before the board, which would put it before you guys, the town. So and I, I hope you understand that uh, nobody on the board can buy this land. And none of their family members can buy this land. So, you know, there, there's an ethical uh, it's just the way you, it's just very gray. Some of the areas are very gray. Not that anybody's going to be biased or anything like that, but just human nature. I mean, that's just how it works, right? You assume the worst. At least I do sometimes. It's like you, you know, you see something as once, once the keys are given, once the votes pass, it's like, okay, now, you know, there's no, nothing in paper, you know, just, I mean, there is to a point, but yeah. If this, uh, if I may, just because, we're asking to use a uh, broker. It doesn't mean that we have count blanche to sell. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just rattled off, you know, five other things we should be looking at, you know, future school, elderly housing, affordable housing, gravel pit for the town. Um, and there's only 16 left. So by the time we do all this, there may be five left. Well, and then we're going to look at those five and see, you know, does it make sense to even sell them? If, if the town's not concerned with selling them, why not just take that language out? Why not just say, we're just going to get these appraised and then we'll vote on whether or not we want to sell them after we know the, the value. Of them. If that's, you know what I mean? That would be the take concern right out of everybody's mouths. Because I think the ultimate goal is to rid the roles of potential land that we deem that's not going to be, uh, advantageous for, for the town for the, for the growth in the future. That's all right. You know, it, there's a lot of like residential lots that the town can uh, benefit from and collect those taxes uh, versus, you know, just letting them sit there. And there's also the, the landlocked pieces of property. That I understand. Is, those. So there's 12 of those. Yeah. So you know, and, and like John said, I mean, we're already um, by town vote was you know we have a sixty thousand dollar debt to to pay back, and we had said that we would do it um, based on land sale. So I think we're doing it in a organized, trying to be professional yeah. way. 
so it doesn't raise all these conspiracy theories and, and what have you? Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, uh, like, I, like I was saying, it's just, not yep. that you guys are going to sell all 33 parcels or whatever, but it's just, like I said, it's one of those things where it's like once you vote on it, you can. You guys can rightfully sell all, all the parcels if you want at one shot. Yeah. Not that you're going to, but the opportunity is there. So, yep. well, thank you for your time. I appreciate nope, it. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Josh. I just want to clarify oh. something a little bit. Every year, oh, the annual oh. town meeting. Guys. Hey. 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 Now, I just want to point out every year at annual town meeting for years going back, I don't know, um, the town always votes to grant approval to the select board to sell tax acquired property by sealed bid or auction. So it's nothing new that the select board has authority to sell tax acquired property. That's always been the case for a long time. The difference in this is we've added um, broker in there and town owned property that's deemed no longer purposeful for municipal use. Um, but it's not because I've heard that a lot. Like, you guys have the authority to sell this land. We've always had that authority. And at annual town meeting, Lyman has granted that authority to the board. I have this to read too. So, yes. 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 Uh, Nicole Leon, Old Bed Davis Road. Um, so a lot of these pieces are very large pieces, um, subdivided pieces. Uh, and I'm just curious how the town is planning on handling the growth of, you know, all of the develop development. Because right now, you know, we have an elementary school with a preschool that is, you know, lottery based. Um, we're talking about expanding that. You're talking about some of the properties being, you know, that as a possibility. But do you really think that we have the infrastructure to support that much development in a potentially short amount of time. Well, it goes to the planning board. So the planning board can sure, we'll to review. If it's detrimental to the town, yeah. the planning board can, you know, decline a subdivision application. Have you ever seen any subdivision applications to the town? I haven't gone to any planning board meetings. Yeah. But they do have. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Oh, well, that's a little bit. Um, and I'm addressing the rest of the board as much as anything. It seems though we've left the landlocked properties out of this discussion. Um, and this is just my opinion. I think while we're doing this process, I don't think there's any advantage in including these in your package going to your broker. But I think these landlocked properties ought to be offered sealed bid to the surrounding landowners. I think this is written to give us an, e an either or. Option, right, right, right. But I'm I'm just listening to all the discussion. Yep. And and I correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. Please, you mentioned when you spoke about you kind of skipped over the landlocked properties. Or you said not including. I I'm not sure. No, I heard them. Okay. Yep. But I'm I'm just saying that might be the consideration to put those out. To border and landowners, it's at you know sealed bid. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I think it's how we set this thing up after we get numbers and data. Right, right. But I, I, I just hadn't heard that stated. He, he did. He did mention in the whole list. Broker John will give a um, you know again a mocking analysis, although it would be less because it's landlocked. Right. At will know what it's worth. Right. I understand that. But you've got to, if somebody borders it and it's landlocked, it would be worth getting it off the books. You know, that may be where we get some of the $60,000 to pay, right. pay back. Right. I mean, right. I think that would be the low-hanging fruit. Right. I think yeah. so too. 
I, I think we're kind of talking in circles. Yep. Did, I'm did just looking. I was just looking for, what I for a clarification, Dave. That's all. Oh, yeah. I have a statement that was sent in to the select board clerk from Ann Tardiff. Um, I am unable to attend the public hearing this evening, either in person or via Zoom. I wanted to send my comments to the board regarding Article 2. I agree that the select board should have the authority to sell property, town property. However, it should be only by sealed bid or public auction and after a fair market appraisal of said property. It should not be done through a contract with a real estate broker as currently proposed in the draft warrant article. All sales of town property should be done with complete transparency to the town's people can feel confident that the town is getting a fair price for the property and there's no backdoor deals being made with any one real estate broker. This avoids the perception of any impropriety on the part of the board of selectmen, whether real or not. Wording the article as proposed only fosters the suspicion of townspeople that deal that deals are being made with benefit, which benefit individuals in town and not the town alignment. Furthermore, every attempt should be made to by the municipality to come to an agreement with property owners who have faced foreclosure by the town due to non-payment of taxes through a consent agreement and a reasonable time frame for payment of back taxes. Thank you for reading my comments into the record at tonight's meeting, and please give a copy of this email to all select board members. And Tart. Holly Woldridge, uh, Tony Oscar Littlefield Road. I was just curious to know if we would have an opportunity to review the report of the properties. I wasn't aware that there were so many. Um, and maybe what the criteria is for determining that they're not usable for municipal purposes. Question. Anyone can avoid it. I have the WU and email select board and I'm dash I'm sorry, anyone can what? Void it. So um for the right to know. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Um but yeah, I can provide it electronically. It's just a list with some notations. Okay. I mean it's, it's a preliminary report too. It's you know that James been working on and Yep. So it'll notate um, ones like the fire department recommended for use, future use. Um, I think Dave's trying to collect more information on maybe, you know, what parcels could be used as a cemetery, what could be used for this. So good. Um, you know, it's always changing. I had no idea there were that many. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I know there's a piece on Williams Road that abuts the York County Soil Conservation property. And I talked closely with one of the girls from there, and um, they like, I think they would certainly be interested in it. Um, but she would need to apply for a grant probably for it. So I don't know anything about grant writing other than that it takes all the time. <laughs> so thank you. Great, thank you. Oh, someone else had it. Right. <laughs> Brian again. Um, one, I don't believe any town property should be sold until it goes, each parcel goes for a vote from the townspeople. Two, I hear a lot of, we don't know what we're doing. It's all got to be drawn up in a plan. If we don't have a plan together, why are we even here tonight? Why are we discussing this question? Shouldn't you have your plan together first and then bring this question to the people. I am the, the plan is to identify all property for potential sale. I get that. It's to identify property for potential um, future growth of the town um, using a real estate agent to potentially sell what is deemed uh, uh, unnecessary for the town to get the best <coughs> price for the town. And that's something that I don't believe we got the best price for things in the past. And that is what we're trying to do now so that that money goes to the infrastructure, whether it be town hall, whether it be roads, whether it be something to keep the tax base down. That's, that's why we're doing it. I understand why you're doing it. 
what answers to people's questions tonight were we need to figure it out. It's we haven't planned for that. It'll be all in the plan. You should have the plan first and then come to us. Get all your ducks in a row first and then come to the people to vote on. Well, then why are the answers we're getting tonight? We don't know. Well, what what is it that we don't know? I'd have to rewind the tape, but Tom yeah, said that what, statement at what least What land are we going to sell? Tonight. We don't know because the report isn't done. We're just looking to utilize a real estate agent or to identify a real estate agent. That's all this is. Nothing's going to happen without multiple meetings, multiple, probably another public hearing once the report is done. It'll already be voted on by then, and you'll have property. the authority to do it all. It's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be non-transparent like it was in yesterday. Sue, again, from South Waterboro Road. Um, Dave, I, I understand what you're saying, and I totally agree that we need to have a feasibility study of some kind to figure out these pieces of property. I think it's a really good idea that we get a real estate agent broker involved with a market analysis. But that is not what this question says. This is a really poorly written article. We've already voted on this article. We do it every year. So we don't need to vote on this again. But what we do need to vote on is a feasibility study to figure out what these pieces of property are, whether they're landlocked, whether they're not landlocked, whether they need to be kept, whether they need to be sold off. That that, that's what already we in the process. Voting on. And you just said that. But that, that is, that's that's what I'm doing. The only the only part that's missing is to work with a broker when it comes time to sell. But, but Dave, we, we are being asked to vote on Article 2. We're not being asked to vote for this study that you're proposing. You need to do the study first, and then we can say, you know, you can line it out. If you look at the town of Waterboro, when they sell a piece of property and they put it out to bid, or any other town in the area, it says map, lot, piece of property, what road it's on, how many acres, it's in a list. And the town what goes and votes and says, yes, we will sell those pieces of property. But that's not what you just said. It's a great idea. I'm not discounting what you just said. But that's not what the article says. The article says to give you full-blown whatever to just, as a select board, go ahead and just sell the property. You don't have any transparency. You don't have to come tell us where the map and lots are. It says to see if the town will authorize the select board to sell tax acquired property. We, are, we already vote on that. It's in the charter. You've added the real estate agent. I understand that. So let's make that a question. Will you agree to allow the select board to hire a real estate broker? That would, that's what Article 2 should say. Beyond that, you know, you can come back, do an article 2A that says, you know, <coughs> will you approve, will the town approve a feasibility study to figure out which pieces of tax owned property need to be sold off? <coughs> That's what we need to vote on. This is really a convoluted article, the way it's written. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, hold on. As far as the feasibility study, that was voted on by the board to, to have Dave lead this um, effort. This isn't something we just made up. This was well, at a select board meeting. Then let's, let's do the feasibility study and you come back with the answers. And you put that in an article. Because this article is sort of unnecessary, except you're trying to slide or contract with a real estate broker into this. My opinion. Um, real estate brokers usually, you know, doing a listing presentation may do that for free, you know, for one property because they want to present to you this is what I can do if you know if you hire me as an agent. I just don't see a broker 
doing a study on 37 properties, it providing all the information for nothing so that we can get a plan in front and then decide if we're going to hire a broker. Well, then it's like every other thing we want to do. The first thing we ask for is the money to do it. That's the way that's, that study would have to be done. Um, I'm hearing everything everybody's saying. And um, as, as I understand it, the purpose of the broker is to do this study because he would do the study and he would be paid for the study from the proceeds of the property. Um, I guess the only issue I have is we get the study all done and it all comes back quite a bit less valuable than we think it is. I'm not sure where we go from here. So, I mean, I'm listening to this out here. But that's, as I understand it, that's why getting the broker involved. And maybe that's, maybe Dave can weigh in on that. If you have a piece of property to say, and they list it, and they, do you have... What happens if it hangs around and you decide not to sell it? Are we obligated for any financial ties to that broker? That's my question. Did I, was I thoroughly convoluted? All right. I, just, I think I, we're going around in circles again. Well, no, it's a, it, it's a, it, we're, we're doing a study. They're asking about having the study and why aren't we doing the study first? Mm -hmm. And, and the obvious reason why we're not doing the study first, in my mind, is if we're going to hire an independent outfit to do the study without hiring anybody to sell it, we've got to pay for the study. So we've got to research and ask for money to pay for the study. Okay. So what we're doing, we're hiring the real estate agent to do the study with the, with the intent he's going to do the study because it's mutually beneficial. It's beneficial to us for a higher price, and it's beneficial to him or her because he gets a percentage of that higher price, right? All right. So you go through all of this, you list all these, and he has a fair investment in this. What if that, that that's a that's a reward, John? They, they, they do that. They do that as a courtesy to the customers, anyway. Okay, that that's my um, question. So we're under no financial you know obligation. If it all comes back and we said, you know, in in small numbers, wow, we thought we'd get ten dollars for that, and they say, oh no, you're only going to get a dollar fifty. We're not obligated to sell. No. Okay. No, that, that's my question. Absolutely not. That's my question. I've got no experience with us. Well, you have a little experience. You were part of selling the school. Yes, but we 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 were going to sell that. We were going to sell it. Period. They voted to the townspeople voted to sell it. They told us to sell it, so we sold it. That's that's here or there. I, I I wouldn't even I I'm not debating. I, personally, I think it was the worst move anybody could have made was getting rid of that school. You keep that's, bringing that's it up. You sound right. like a debate. No. I think that with better guidance, there should have been much more money on the table for the town. And that's what I'm hoping that this board is going to bring to the table for any land that eventually might be sold. Nicole, Leon, uh, Open Davis wrote, so Cousin School was voted on to be sold. Are these parcels, once you do the feasibility study, are we going to be able to have the opportunity to say which pieces get sold? Or is that in your hands? So not hands. Okay. So we have no say, just to clarify. We have the townspeople have no vote in which parcels get sold of your list. No, I'm sorry, who's talking? Nicole Eon, old Ben Davis Road. Hi. Um 
you know, is, is far, like I said, this is a process. Um, I see us getting together at least two more times, you know, let's finish the feasibility study, this study, and then reconvene on, because people may start saying, Hey, what about, right. So why are we voting? I can't, I can't, you know, I, like I said, I drained my brain with school, elderly housing, affordable housing, the time, town of gravel pit, plus the other things that I mentioned. Um, and maybe somebody else has other ideas that the town, you know, should have. Um, Why would the town be know, involved I, I in elderly housing? Uh, uh, recreational trails and things of such. Uh, but let's get the let's get the pricing together. Let's see if it's even worthwhile to sell. I mean, obviously the land law. Yeah, I get it. You know, but I personally am one that I don't think we should give whether land law or not. I don't think the town should give it away. Okay, that's, but there's gonna be no, but again, just to reiterate, there's no way for us as citizens to say what pieces of land are, are sold or not. That's up to you guys. I, I, John, you'd have to speak to the how, how it's been, but right now I exactly think, think that's true. They, I, I always thought we had to go to a town okay. meeting. There is no study. I was correct. This other line is being rewritten. You're rusty. Yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. What, what business does the town alignment have with elderly housing? Mm -hmm. Well, saying we are. It just it was just. He's mentioned it three he's times. Mentioned, he's mentioned the fire station. He's mentioned the school. The town. Just, it's yes. just. It's just the, a list. No, no. School <laughs> is is the district, which is the town. The fire station is two yeah. towns. I'm just asking. I, I, I don't just, know. I don't see that we're down the, that far down the road, John. Then why it's do just, we say it? It was just his opening statement. Oh, okay. That was just all part of his statement. Okay. All right. Just John, what is it, what is your exact question? He wants to know why we, the town would be involved in elderly housing. I, I'm not saying that, that it wouldn't, but down the road, what if the town was mandated to have elderly housing. We have a I'm not saying that the town would build it, but at least you could then market that property for elderly housing. Is that not thinking for the future? Is that in the comprehensive plan? It is. It's in the comprehensive plan. I, I think plan. in in some instances there were there were things sold in this town that you know the future wasn't taken into consideration. I just mentioned Dave and Brenda nodded yes. You know this can be tied into the comprehensive plan. It should be. It should be. No, and, I, and I, I don't know. I'm trying. I know you. Everybody has this anxiety over this, but you know, it took us ten years to agree on paving Oscar Littlefield Road, and you know it, it just it just keep kicking the can down down the road. So to speak, you know. I just think we're trying to be progressive and looking at this. It's not like we're going to put for sale signs out tomorrow. That's not the way I look at it, and the way, the way I'm understanding it, and the way it's been. We've discussed it, so that's just my my opinion. I just think we need to get a plan together in in both the list and appraisals. It, it's all, I think it's all part of the package, but I don't see us putting for sale signs out right, right away. Who says that we authorize you? <clears throat> Well, we're authorized anyway, like and you this, said. This article says that we are going to authorize the select board to sell any tax-acquired property or town-owned real estate. That's what this article says. This article does not say that we're going to figure out what the lots are, what they're worth, whether or not we're going to do a feasibility study, whether it's going to cost us any money to have a broker come in and appraise these maybe we should hire a real estate appraiser not a broker because a real estate appraiser is not going to have any monetary investment in deciding on these properties they're not they going to make their six percent profit they're not going to make four percent no, 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 no. so Sorry. i think what we need to do is step back from this article 
and basically say what we've all and you've all said tonight about a feasibility study and you're still trying to figure out which pieces of property and what they're worth. Ask us to vote to allow you to do that, not to authorize you to just sell the properties, period. Because that's what this article says, that we're authorizing you to go ahead and sell. Um, Am I wrong, Dave? That's exactly how this is written. Again, this was written, you, the town's already voted on this without the broker in it. Exactly. Yeah. So we don't need to vote on this again. We need to vote on allowing the select board to do the study that the, we've already voted on and said, yes, let's do it. We need to see what that study says. Which of the lots? What's the value? How did we come up with that value? We don't need to come up with this entire thing voted on again. The Article 2 could simply state to see if the town will authorize the select board to contract with a real estate agent or broker. That's what this question you are attempting to shove down our throats. What, you know, if that's what you want to ask, then ask the question. Don't go on and on in long sentences that don't make any sense, by the way, and are written properly in the punctuations off. What you need to do is ask us to go ahead and complete the feasibility study and then propose which lots should be sold. And do we get a real estate agent, a broker? I think you need a real estate appraiser. The broker's got investment. The appraiser won't. Hey, can I film this as we're here? Because she keeps rolling her eyes over there when people are talking. This looks funny. I'd like to post it on Facebook if that's okay. Mike, that's enough, please. Well, she needs to stop rolling her eyes whenever she Mike, talks. Mike, if you're going to talk, come up to the podium, please. Okay, All right, so between October 17th and November 7th, what happened with the lease agreement? You guys told us to come back to sign a lease. You said, bring all your paperwork, your members, and stuff. And then we come here and you guys go, no, we didn't say that. Would you guys like to read the minutes where it says that? That Dave says come back the next meeting with your members and the paperwork and we'll go over the lease. No, no, we your membership roll. It says membership here. And go back and read, go back and listen to what you said twice. You said to bring up our members here and to hash, we'll sit down and hash this out. Twice you said it in there. So we showed up to hash it out and what did we get? Hopefully we have to bring the members. I think Let's just right. Right. Does that have to do with this? Read in the yellow. Easy Mike. Read. Back off. Because you can't read. Back it. off. And why don't these three say anything? All right. Uh, let's have him removed, please. I'm not well, this what? is the second meeting you've done this. I'm 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 really we tired of this mic. You know what happened? We you, we ha we already said it at the beginning. Anybody that's yeah. uh Are you gonna grab the gavel again, which is not your job? Can Jesus Mike that's his let's, job. Let's just stop. Right. This is crazy. But why didn't you three bring it up that we were supposed to vote on that at that meeting? It says it right here. To come back to the next meeting and vote on a new lease. You guys didn't say a word. So who's wrong here? Who's lying? Don't be lying. And why is it safe for us to come in? It was your officers that were supposed to come in, not the whole club. The whole club didn't come in. Invite some of your members to the next meeting to discuss updates before the board reviews the lease. That's just part of it. So she's lying. This, this, this isn't the place to debate this. We're talking it's about a place the, to debate where, where this, but is, this is a this piece is of not... property. This is a piece of property. It don't make sense. It's not part of the... Mike, what? that piece of property has been identified for a potential snowmobile and recreational. But well, why did you tell us to come it, back in the next that meeting what you to release? To to have it at least identified. That's what we're doing. No, but you told us to come back the next meeting to do a lease. Yeah. I, I never said to come back and do a lease. It's right I, here. I, it's just a review. The, I don't wait, remember. Point of order. Yes, in the minute. To review. To do the lease. 
where the lease is expired, yeah, so tenant at will, you guys voted five to, to O oh, for us to come back at the next meeting to go over it. As Dave put it, bring your paperwork, we'll sit down, we'll hash it out. Twice he said that. Mm -hmm. Well, we showed up and what he said, no, we're not doing that. And why do you say one time, one meeting, we're going to do it, and then the next, no. To go over it is one thing, to sign it is, is something else. Okay, okay so go let's over go over it. the lease then. Where's the we're, lease? We're not here for that, Mike. It's a piece of property. It's part of the property that you guys want to sell. Excuse me, what was the, the term? Tenant at will. Yes, yep. a tenant at will lease. Did, was that ever done? No. Because that's we did we did it. That's as I understand it. That's what we were going to do. Was a tenant tenant at will. Yes, that's the yeah. phrase. I mean, it's potatoes, potatoes. You can sign a lease today, and we can call it null and void tomorrow. So if at least you know, you know. Well, why would you? Uh, no reason why. So I'm just saying, if this is a, a point of contention here about a lease yeah. and, and and having been on the other side where you where the where the membership wanted a 99 year lease okay most towns do that before. well okay but you know that i always said when i was president that i don't think that was a good idea it's town properties but the town can take the property back at any time they, they want to so right. we can sign a month lease a year lease so what, right, what's, the, lease. What, what's the problem of, of, of if mr uh Doolong says if you sign up a lease, everything goes away. No, because if we break the lease, then you can come and take it away. That's why a lot of towns do 99 year lease. So at any time, if we're doing having big keg parties over there, then you guys can come and shut us down and say that's it. And I don't think there's been one neighbor complained. I know they haven't. We improve the property and stuff and we're at the point it's like we don't want to put nothing into it because we don't know what's going to happen and to move it would cost you're probably talking 60 grand to put in a new septic system somewhere a new foundation all that stuff and dave says well we'll probably find a way to pay for that <clears throat> why sell the land if you're going to spend 60 grand to move it and there's 14 acres there you could break off four still have 10 and sell two fives. We already talked about that, Mike, and you know something? That was a good idea, remember? If you can remember that meeting. Yeah. What's the zoning so, over there? Can we move on? Five, five. That's what this is not even. Said. So you only got two well, lots. Two lots 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 no, it's not. No? nine acres yeah and it rolls down over pretty hard and gets wet right as i remember because oh, yeah. we've long. been we've been trying to log that right the, it hasn't been logged yeah because it was so wet because that looks like old veneer down there to me which doesn't have no idea yeah i know we just move them out of the way if they yeah fall. but <laughs> um to me, so you should have had a a tenant at will lease. I, I don't know what's involved with that. Is that 30 days? So that means you renew a new lease every 30 days. Is that how that works? Or is it continuous? Yeah. Continuous. Like as the town can walk into the Stoneville Club and say you have 30 days to vacate. And then they have to go to court. They have to give you official paperwork. They have to do court paperwork. It's, it's all set out, John. It's yeah. And, and for the part of moving your building and stuff, that's public money on private land. I, I I'm sitting here thing. questioning the legality of that myself. That, you know, like I say, that, I'm one. Dave says that. I, yeah, yeah, right. I, yeah. I, I, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I think, can we move? Just a direct question. Thank you. And Mike, the Boy Scouts Mike. have a 99 year lease. Is that still in effect for all that town land? Have you kicked uh, them yeah. off yet? Oh, they're on bunker up, right? Yeah. Is that part of the properties you're looking at? I hope so. Town on its own list. Brian again. Um, kind of get back to your question about voting on the land. Unfortunately, about 40-ish people 
decided that question at the town meeting. So the 4,000 people that live in Lyman, 40 people decided for it, that they got to sell the land. That's pretty bad. More people need to show up to those meetings. Um, second, why don't you guys sell off all the land locked pieces, use that money to do a study on the rest of the land, how much it's worth, and then come back to us with a real question that we can vote on. Take the low hanging fruit, use it for something good, and everyone can have their minds at ease. Study. Along the lines of what Brian said, could could the board choose to take the offers that you're given and put it to a vote to the people so they can decide which parcels get sold up? Is that legal? So that they would have a say at what's being voted off, like narrow it down to so many that would meet the needs for the 60,000 and then bring it to the vote of the people and let them choose out of those parcels that are listed. Just an idea. Definitely. Maybe that would something could be looked make into. Make people feel more comfortable with what you're selling wrong. Yep. <clears throat> Not after you vote on this article, though. This kind of locks in, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's already that way. Right. Right. I understand. Right. I mean, really. So we lose any time to rewrite this without without that language and just put what Sue was saying. Do we lose any time for the town meeting? Is it you got to do another public hearing, right? Well, I just have to draft another article. You guys have to sign it. It needs to be relatively soon. Do we have to do another public hearing? No, not necessarily. No, because not technically we didn't anything. need to have a public hearing. I'm sorry, I thought technically we didn't have to have. I still can't. Guess. guess. Technically, we didn't have to have a public hearing for this specific because it's a special town meeting. So public comment. Is at the meet can be at the meeting. Yep. We chose to do this as an extra piece you have to have your for a moment. Finalized um, pretty soon, probably within the next week. It has to be attested and has to go out. Right. Holly so. Wolfridge again. I just have one more question, just to clarify, because I don't have a copy of the old one that we voted on in the summer with me, but it was to add the broker. And it was tax acquired, and now in addition, it's the broker, tax acquired, and town it, owned. Town owned. Okay. Yeah, I, I just is that what she she asked? It didn't that get added? The, the town and or town owned property. Yeah. That's a lot of property. So so this it hasn't been approved one hundred percent. Only the tax lien property can be sold by the tax acquired. Yep. But so we're voting on town owned real estate and a real estate broker. That's what this question is. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Move on to Article Three. All right, article question number three. This article is for the appropriation of funds to conduct an HR job study for the purpose of reviewing salary budgets and in accordance with the newly revised charter, help provide recommendations in preparation of transitioning to a town manager form of local government. We currently have $5,000 budgeted and the board is looking for an additional 15,000, 30, 50 to ensure uh, sufficient funds are available. Any comments? Yes. David Long, yeah. Uh, I have actually two issues with this, this article. <coughs> the first one is that. One of the things we've we've done at the last uh, 
meeting was to approve the, uh, the, the new town charter. The new town charter requires that we get a town manager. One of the reasons that we decided to expand the town hall was because we need a place for the town manager, among other things. Taking the money from the feasibility study to do the town hall expansion and using it to pay for a personnel study seems like a waste of money. What are we going to do if we have a town manager and no place for him to sit? We'll have a personnel study, but we won't have a place for him to sit. The second issue that I have with this is that our new town charter identifies what the town manager's job is. The town manager is the, the administration of the, of the town and town employees shall be vested in the town manager. So the town manager will administer the town employees. Further on down in the charter, it says the town manager with the assistance of each element leader shall prepare and maintain a town organization document for approval by the board. This document will outline the specific duties and responsibilities of each town, of each element of the town and government. The leader of each element will provide the town manager with a mission and vision statement, goals, organization chart for the respective element. Human resources, this is all part of the town manager's responsibility. The town manager shall hire and appoint all employees of the town. The town manager shall ensure that all positions in the town government are filled with qualified and competent persons. The town manager shall develop a personnel policy document. This policy shall contain topics such as, but not limited to, recruiting and hiring process, pay scales, etc. The town manager shall develop job descriptions for each job or employee position within the town government. This is the town manager's job. We want to spend $20,000 plus or minus to hire somebody else to do the job that the town manager is responsible to do. And oh, by the way, in the meantime, we're going to leave the town manager out of the process. This is the problem that I have with it. Any other, any other comments, concerns? All right, if there's uh, no further comments, uh, was it, was it not? Oh, okay. this will conclude the public hearing. Uh, the board will now close the public hearing and open into uh, the regular select board meeting. <clears throat> uh, welcome to the January 3rd, 2023 regular meeting of the Lyman Board of Selectmen. This meeting is a public proceeding is being recorded. Uh, would you all join me in the pledge of allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right. Um, Jessica. Yeah. Were you briefed on the uh, microphones? Nope. You can't turn them off. They're always on. So okay. when you push it down, you can use them. Okay. So, and the green so you have to hold on. The green light on. Yes. The green's on, they're live. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess we'll just jump right to C. Vote to approve warrant for special town meeting. Um, I'll be sorry. So, you want the final one? Yeah. You want to talk about it? Under what? Because the budget committee had a different recommendation. 
um, when they did their recommendation. I changed this. So this is the original, because you guys said to take it out of the feasibility, and the budget committee recommended just take it all out of surplus to add to the 5,000. If you don't, you know, if you agree with them, then we can do it so it's consistent. So I put the select board recommendation as the same as the budget committee. You follow? Yeah, so Meaning that we would take it out of surplus. So right, right. So I had created thinking if you guys want to be consistent with the budget committee. If you don't, you can leave it like that. And we'll go like that. Do you hear that, Dave? Yeah, Lee, but I, I, I get the gist. Um, is, it, is it taking it out of the um, uh, operating fund uh, surplus? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's important that I know the budget committee puts a lot of time into their recommendations as well. And I just think it's important. I, I don't have any issues with that. So I would support. Yeah. Same pants, different pocket. Yeah. I mean, just as a cursory, you didn't watch our meeting. Well, you can go up there. Or, yeah. You know, so, so, so people keep it here. I mean, basically, Rod's there too. It, it was basically, it was like, we felt like it was always Rob and Peter and Paypal. Yep. You're always taking this in the process, just get really late. So that's the only reason we went for surplus of money staying for and the feasibility. I did watch the. Oh, you did? Yeah. It was cozy in there. Uh, um, <laughs> it was <safe> quarters. <laughs> is the building committee. I don't want this to sound the way it's going to sound. Actually, be able to get anything done between now and June. Because I, I yes, mean, the survey, John. Okay. All right. So, so you can use that money and make good use of it. That's my only question. Are you poised to do that? Yes. Are you? I, okay. I think what, what we were under the impression of is that at the time, um, uh, the feasibility study needed to be funded right away. Okay. So we were taking that amount, that nine thousand ninety six hundred, whatever was left, and shifting it over. Then it was it was my impression that we could use the APA funds to do um, to re reimburse that basically, uh, but we can't. So the, the budget committee is correct, and uh, you know we should be taking it out of the surplus and and move on from there. Okay, that's easy. I'd move. We support the budget committee's decision. Yeah. I second that. Any discussion? We don't. All in favor? Aye. All right. We don't want to. Okay. So you got us all on your warrant. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like all three you're all in yep. with. Correct. Well, what shall we do with Article 2? I, I just think we heard a lot of solid feedback suggesting that we take a step back, and I, I don't want to delay the process, but I also, we just can't ignore, I, I don't feel as though we can ignore everything that we heard here tonight. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know what that means, but I think it means that question two doesn't go as is for right. me personally. Can we reword it and vote on this tonight? We can. We've got to redo the article, right? And where it's a special meeting, as I understand it, we don't have to have another public hearing, correct? Mm -hmm. So we could reword it. It's like everything else. We've got to ask for the money to make the study. So the new article is, is, and this is just me thinking out loud here, would say something like, and again, we've got to do some research. Um, an amount of X to hire a... Appraiser. A, a what? I think, uh, I think she was a right. Land appraiser, appraiser, appraiser to do a study. I, I think. I, I, oh, or, yeah, you got, um, again, this is this is one person speaking here, but yeah, I'm you, not this, in favor of hiring an, an appraiser. Okay. An appraiser, first of all, is probably six months out, minimum, I bet. 
then it would take quite a long time to, to actually do it. Um, and then it's probably, it's, it's expensive. You know, that's the whole purpose of getting a, uh, a broker involved and, and do a market analysis, not an appraisal. You know, we're not a bank. You know, if it doesn't appraise, it's it's not our problem. If 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 a house is only is worth five hundred thousand and you sell it for six fifty, well, it only appraised for five hundred thousand. The market value was six fifty. So the town gets a bigger return on the market value versus an appraisal potentially. Also, if you make this uh, an appropriation question, it needs to go to the budget committee for a recommendation. So, if you ask to move funds from here or raise or appropriate, we're going to have to put a statement of fact in there. And that's going to catch you down on your timeline quite a bit. We did have quite a bit of feedback tonight, though. And that's, we can't ignore that. We just can't. I think no. the other recommendation was reducing the wording to simple text of will the town authorize the board to hire a real estate broker? In, or in some terms like that. So that was a recommendation made from these guys. Mm, that's what said. Sue said. Yeah. No, she said an appraisal. Well, well then she came back as she came back later and yeah. talked yeah. about appraisal. It was all over the board. Yeah. I said the difference in but no, I don't have it put together yet. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think we should. Pay I don't know somebody. why we don't just bring it to the the town for a vote. In the end, I mean that should settle everybody's stomach. <coughs> I mean, like I said, I always thought that you had to go in front of the town. You know, um, I, I think you're going to be, you know. Uh, 10 months away, but if it's really that rabbit around town that they don't want us to do it, then put it to a vote. Yeah, I'd be fully in support of putting whatever properties before it, the people to I, vote. I believe on. it was it was always that, at least that's what John said, it was always that the selectmen could, could sell it. Yeah, it was. Where we have it too. I'm just going to say it based on everything we heard tonight. Do we take two off the table until we have a better, more solid plan of what we're doing? Is that a motion? And continue to <coughs> continue to work on the feasibility piece, Dave, that you're working on, but more definitively define the exact parcels that we'd like to sell. I'm just saying that uh, in my out loud voice to consider. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm just, I, I agree. And I also don't, I, we're going to do the feasibility study. Dave and, and company have been doing out there walking the property, looking for the property and what have you. Yep. Once that's once that is uh, completed, we don't have to pay for that. We have enough talent within the town hall uh, and to 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 finish that out, and then by hiring a broker, okay, just to give an idea of what the market is on it, it just kind of gives you two pieces of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, to say, okay, here's what you got. You got land. We're not saying that we're selling the snowmobile land. We're not saying we're selling any land. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to take a look at the data. You know better than anybody. I do. Okay, and 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 just look at it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I just, I just the way it. it's written. I think we that to make it. So yeah, I'm absolutely well, open to any. If if that wording is in 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 the town. Um, annual town hall uh, in the town meeting. I, it, I think it comes down to broker versus uh, appraiser. And listen to what I'm hearing appraiser is going to cost us a lot of money. In time. 
right? And time. So I think, I guess my question is, is hearing what you're saying, we have talent in town hall, be able to sort of wrap out the some of those pieces. Do we feel though that we could pull something together to say these are these are the actual definitive ones we're considering working with a broker and then potentially identifying the process of what you know some of the stuff that I heard tonight about bias and how would you determine what's purposeful for municipal use? Could we better define that before annual town meeting? So that gives us six months to really get it solidified and then put it like like to Sue's point, map this, lot this. Absolutely. I wouldn't that, we, I would I wouldn't I don't think we would do anything less than that. I mean that's just good business. We've already done it. We have a list of all those properties. Well, I know, but once we get all the data in, and then how do we prioritize it and all that? And because this whole bias thing and, and what have you, like, we definitely want to avoid that. And what is the criteria? Because that would be one of my own questions. So I just I'm not opposed to any of this, and I don't think that we're intentionally trying to do anything wrong. I just think the more transparent we can be with having it all put together and solidified. Yeah. I, that, that would be my take on it. I don't know. I don't know. I... Guys, are those microphones on the um, desk working? Oh, can you not hear me? Sorry, Dave. Is they're awful. Can they you hear us, Dave? Who can you not hear? Probably me. I definitely can't hear Oh, okay. oh. Oh, is that what it is? Yes. Gotcha. All right, so we kill it too. We table in this. I'm going to make a motion that we. Uh, What's the right word I'm looking for? Remove Article 2 from the warrant and focus between now and annual town meeting of pulling together the data, solidifying process, and identifying uh, properties to put before the town's people at annual meeting in June. Does that cover everything I need to say in a motion? Can we have a second out there? I'll second it. Any discussion? Yes, I have a question. Oh, go ahead, sir. Um, Tom, can you repeat it? Jessica's made a motion to remove yeah. Article 2 from the warrant, which will give us time to, between now and the town meeting, to finish the feasibility study and have something to present at the town meeting, the annual town meeting. I don't know what that is, but. Well, define to define the process of how we determine something's not purposeful for municipal use and to define specifically which properties we're looking at to actually sell. Because we keep, we keep saying, oh, well, we might not sell that, you know, just because we're looking at it, we might not sell them. But I, I just think if people have a more definitive, do you approve to sell this one, this one, and this one, it's easier for people to say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's landlocked or no way. That's the snowmobile club, right? Yep. Does there, is there anything that stops us? Do we need town to use a, um, a broker? I mean, Only to go into contract with them. I mean, a broker can give you a CMA or comparative market analysis, and a lot of times in listing presentations, they'll do that for free. But I think, you know, if you present to them, here's 37 parcels of land, I want you to dig in all the information and give me the market analysis on it, that becomes a huge load of work. Yeah. Most brokers will give you one listing presentation for free and say, here's what I got to offer you. If you're willing to for me to give you more, you can hire me. So we might get one CMA out of it, or maybe there is a broker willing to do that. I don't know any that would. My no, I guess let me just clarify since we're still in, we're in discussion now, right? Because you made a second, so I wouldn't anticipate having any of that data at town. That specific piece, like going into a contract with a broker at town meeting, I would anticipate being able to say, "These are the properties we're looking at. 
this is why we're looking at them because whatever the factors are of the process that we determined, these are what we're looking to get permission to proceed with a sale and get whatever, whatever that, again, define that process of it will be highest bid only, or it will be based on whatever criteria it better define those, those pieces of it. Do we get all that? Yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to yell to you. Oh, I just think after process. what we heard tonight, it yeah. it makes yeah. logical sense. Yeah. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yes. Mm. Tell me when. Yeah. Yeah. No, tell me twice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Let's go to item two uh, public input. Uh, anybody have anything they want to address the board with? just need to fix a little blooper from the last meeting that you had. Um, I listened to it, and you were asked where you wanted the warrant posted. And Harry's and Jackson's Corner were mentioned. They do not have bulletin boards for postings anymore, and they don't want anything up on their new painted walls and their new buildings, so we don't post there. You also have to take into consideration for my email I sent you that you need to post in both districts. We have always posted at the other places you mentioned, here at the town hall, the transfer station, Goodwin Smell Store, the library, and also Lyman Variety and Pizzeria, which is in District 136. Today on my way into work, I stopped in at the main homestead market on the corner of Kenny Road and 111, which would also be in one, District 136, and I got the store manager's permission to start posting there as well. So you would need to rescind your Harry's and Jackson's Corner and add to your list the main homestead market and climate pizzeria and variety so that Shirley has your permission because you were asked where you wanted it posted, although we've been posting for years, so that she can post in these places. Okay. Clarification: It does state in the new charter that the board has to has discretion on where. That's why I asked where are you going to post this. Yeah. Because the board has to decide that. Yeah. Um, but as the point Polly makes, you know, now we know Jackson doesn't care because it's off the yeah. table. No, yeah. if you if you would include me in conversation when it comes to things that the clerk's office does, so you can hopefully get it right the first time. So when you know I'm asking again. In the future, if it pertains to the clerk's office, please include the town clerk's office in conversation. And I heard um, someone from the the audience uh, at one of the meetings asked if there was anybody training to back up Shirley. Should Shirley be out the registrar of voters? And obviously, yes. State statute says if the town clerk is not the registrar registrar, the town clerk has to be the deputy. So we have always had a backup for Shirley. So I just need you to update your where you want the warrant posted and we're good to go and Shirley will be posting your warrant while she was planning on it Thursday. It's going to be posted seven days before your... Yeah, so I'm to tomorrow. Same. So you voted to sign it with just the one article, and that article isn't being changed at all, correct? Because you're supposed to vote and sign in public. Yeah, we're going with this one. Which I was right. Yep. Honest number two. Okay. So 
Do I need to make a motion? Do I have to rescind the one or just a new motion? I'll just say I'll just make a motion to rescind the locations of Harry's and um, Jackson's. Jackson's Corner, Irving, and replace it with Lyman Pizzeria. Lyman Pizzeria. Homestead. Lyman Pizzeria and the Homestead Market. I will second that motion. Any discussion on that motion? No. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. <coughs> Anybody else? No? All right. I'll move on to. Wow. Seems like everybody's looking for a little cash here on the mail. Now it just gets put into budget, right? Yep. Um, the uh, regional school unit 57, their uh, annual report. Just uh, the district referendum vote will be held on the 13th. The total general fund budget for 22 23 school year 48,508,257. The Lyman <clears throat> local portion of this budget is five million four sixty six six thirty nine, which equals eighteen point seven one percent of the total local tax. Just crazy numbers. Do you have the percent increase over last year, Rusty? Uh, two point five two. Is it? Oh wow, nice. No, two point. Yep, nice call. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess we'll move on to minutes. Uh, review approved minutes for 12 19 20 22. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Dave, you All with us, buddy? Dave. Aye. 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 Bye. Stay with us. Bye. Reading. All right, let's move it on. Uh, payroll number 29, payroll warrant number 29, the amount of 25342.96. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> Accounts payable warrant number 30 for year end 2023 in the amount of 595,509.10. So moved. Seconded. Any discussion? Who's M M E H T? I couldn't. We went over this. I, uh, that question was asked before, and I can't remember what the answer was. You know, we'll probably text us in a second. Oh, never mind. No, it's our benefits. Me, yeah. That was a good one. And how? Yeah. Like yeah. I knew somebody answered that. Uh, <laughs> All of it. We already discussion. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Am I allowed to do that? Sure. I'll just raise it sure. to the right. Oh, I don't know. Can't have a gavel. Oh, no, goodness. <coughs> All right. Unfinished business. Mm -hmm. um, Health officer. Oh, we did. I had to leave on personal reasons. You'd like it to be tabled. Next meeting. I motion right. that we table that till next meeting. Second. Oh, All there. Not sure if I need to do that, but. All there. All right. Okay. Dave. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. All right. Dave.
All right, let's move on to item six, department and committee reports. Uh, Brad, anything you want to join? Oh, yes, it does. Okay. okay, all the storm damage has been removed, at least to my knowledge, and cleaned up. Uh, Tibbetts Lane was all trimmed. All the trees have been overgrown for many years, so that finally has been done. Um, we have not exceeded or reached the threshold to apply for FEMA help for the storm damage. So we're not going to apply for that. Uh, between Matt's expenses and mine, uh, we didn't reach that threshold, so we're not going to go through that again. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not a bad thing. It's a pain. No, it's, it's not pressing. Um, I think that's about all I had. We do have a one bid so far on the transfer station on all the concrete work. Two. I received a quote today, which I'll share with you next meeting when I get a little more information. But I've only received one out of the four people I reached out to. So, any other questions? Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Wait a minute. I did see you wrote something to us about the Oscar Littlefield the, that was completed. The tank, the, the, side. the shoulders are all done. Or did I read that in the minutes? Probably in the minutes. I wrote, yeah, the I shoulders are done. And also, there was a damaged sign and an accident at Hamilton Road, and that's already been repaired. And we have put in an insurance claim against the company for the repairs on that. Good. Thanks, Brad. Hmm? Will they take down one of the brand new stop signs? Stop sign, road sign, two posts, yeah. bumper, all kinds of mess. That's what happens when we pave it and let people just cruise. Oh, it's silly. The wrong side, some in the other direction. Yikes. Just lost control, went across two lanes. I'm not paying attention. Don't know all the details, but just clean the mess up. Or that poor guy's mailbox is down every time I go by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dave, you have any update on the Kennebunk Pond? Am I what? Do you have any update on Kennebunk Pond? I uh, know, no, they're uh, meeting, uh, they are meeting, I believe, at the end of this week, if not the beginning of next week, I read. So they had to, we have not had another meeting with uh, David Maines yet. Thank you. Uh, the treasurer has your expense report put in here. Um, CEO, got anything she wants to add? Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks, Clerk. Anybody else? Yeah, I do. I was out, as you know, all week last week. Um, I need you to appoint Irene Singer and Barbara Hull as your ballot clerks for your special town meeting you're going to have, I will have the appointments typed up tomorrow for you to sign when you come in and sign the warrant, but you need to appoint them as the workers for your special town meeting. So Barbara Hall and Irene Single, and Rick Hall is available to moderate the meeting. And Shirley Harrison, because you have a date that I'm not going to be here, Shirley Harrison is going to take my place and be the deputy town clerk for a special town meeting. Thank you. With the, if we come in tomorrow, we'll appoint we... them tonight, and then you'll sign the appointments for Irene Sigel and Barbara Hall tomorrow when you come in. Is it paperwork done? No. No. Normally, the clerk would give me that information. I could just put it to you guys at the meeting and have it all typed up. But yeah. like she said, you can come in tomorrow to sign it. Just do the motion on appointment now. Okay. Make a motion that we appoint <coughs> Irene Single, Barbara Hall, as ballot, ballot. clerks, clerks. For, the special for the special town meeting. Town meeting. <laughs> I'll second that motion. You got it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. All right, Dave, thank you. Okay, perfect. All right. All right.
right. Uh, discuss scheduling and budget workshops. So our next meeting is on the 16th. Oh, it's Martin Luther King Day, though. We no, we already motioned. We moved that to the 17th. Okay, good. I had that in my question. Did that a little while ago. I, what's your guys' availability? I mean, I'm pretty flexible. Sure. Wednesdays or Thursdays are good for me. Those are best for me, too. So. Wednesday or Thursday, Dave? Wednesday. Yeah, that's fine. Wednesdays are probably tricky for planning board, right? So the 11th um, planning board doesn't meet at 6, which is a Wednesday. What about Thursdays? The 12th. So we don't have to worry. What's but? Nothing on the 12th. What is budget doing? You guys want to work on the 19th. Okay. So we could at least get the 12th. I like the 12th. Will you? Uh, sure. I mean, it seems okay with me right now. It seems okay with me right now. <laughs> I don't know why that date brings a bell, but we'll put it down. Okay. Six o'clock. Does that work still work? Good, everybody? Six? Yeah, just double check with Jeanette, right? That would be a good call. Minor detail, right? Okay. okay. As long as she doesn't burn everything. <laughs> All right. Oh, all right, moving on. Um, open the next up RFP seal bids for mowing contracts. Is it the same format? I don't think we gave like a response sheet necessarily. Did we? Yeah. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah. Oh, this? Yeah. Perfect. Is that what you have? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. How do we? Uh, like, do we read out every one year one, year two, year three, year four? Nothing is. Uh... I guess that's how you do it, huh? You do read the numbers for at least the first year. First year, 55,700. Do you know who is this? Oh, this is, I'm sorry, um, LA Lawn Care. LLC out of Alfred. First year was 55,700. Second year was 56,495. Third year, 57,291. Fourth year, 58,087. And fifth year, 58,882. Doesn't give a percent of increase. It just, it was a dollar, I believe that's a dollar amount of $795.70 each time. And so, are we ready? So I have KCB landscaping with year one being 48. Sorry, Dave, can you hear me? Mm, hard. I have KCB landscaping and year one is $48,420.84. Year two is that amount plus cost of living and then so on. So year three would be the cost of year two plus cost of living. Year three, and then year four is cost of year three plus cost of living. Year five is the cost of year four plus cost of living. And it's the federal cost of living increase. All right. What's the bottom line of both of them after five years? Well, there's no way to. Oh, you got to do the cost of living, right? Right. Is there only two? Yep. I would make a motion that we 
proceed and award the contract to KCB Landscaping. Second. Any discussion? All I'm available. sorry, can you oh. repeat that, please? She made a motion to award the contract to KCB Landscaping. We have a motion made by Jessica. Jessica. Seconded by me. We're in discussion. I tried to use my mom voice. It doesn't work here. <laughs> you all said, Dave? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll put a vote. All in favor? Aye. All right. Do you get the Lindsay? Do you? <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll move on to open seal bids for winter maintenance of town rooms. You want to swim down? Yeah, yeah, sure. Everybody gets a turn. I realize my hands don't work right. <laughs> Sharper than my knife. Wasn't judging. Okay. Um, all right. Year one is four fifty, four hundred fifty thousand. Year two is four hundred sixty three thousand five hundred. Year three is four hundred seventy seven thousand four hundred. Year four is four hundred ninety one thousand eight hundred. Year five is five hundred six thousand five hundred. Year six negotiable at that negotiable at that time. Um, Who's the company? Poria um, says. Trying to find yeah, trying to find the official name of the company here. Dayton Snowfighters. Dayton Snowfighters. Thank you, Paul. Maybe under references, 18 years for the town alignment. I'm going to say that's who's got it now. Mm -hmm. 20 years town of Dayton, five years town of Waterboro. Do you know what kind of increase that is? From what we've, gone up, we've gone up roughly 25% <coughs> of this coming up next year. <coughs> Uh, year one, and then it's approximately fifteen percent. I'm not. I'm sorry, not fifteen percent. It's approximately three percent. Yeah. On the increase, but instead of pennies and change, I just rounded numbers. But mm -hmm. it's approximately three percent annually after the first year of a twenty-five percent increase. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I ask who is talking? So sorry. Uh, it's Paul Poria, Dayton Snowfighters. Do you hear that, Paul? The fuel clause is in there. Got a max of six dollars per gallon. It was asked of the bidders to have it in there. Perfect. Well, that's our <coughs> only one. Hmm. Well, they're already doing it. I make a motion that yeah. we award the contract to Dayton Snowfighters. I'd second that. Yep. Any discussion? No. Sorry. <laughs> All in favor? With us, Dave? Yep. Okay. Hi. Okay. I was like, I didn't yell that Thank time, so I don't know what's going on. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, audit, auditing service contract expires 6 2023. Review quotes. I have this one. Right. 
sign on this. This is the person who used for community on the bar. Um, but just because it will come up and expire, um, and you probably want to know what you're going to spend on it in your annual town budget. Yeah. So do we slide this into our budget file? I'm sorry, Rusty, I didn't hear you. I'm just, do we put this in with our budget file? I mean, to well, know. When does it expire? When does June it expire? 20. June 2023. Um, so she won't be able, so she did already sign on the but we have time to see if any if somebody else responds or yeah. we have any, yeah. we have a little bit of a buffer of time yeah. okay <laughs> i'm not i'm not opposed with going with it i just due diligence i guess are you suggesting else. an rfp or, or what are you doing no, I'm just suggesting that we hold off because she's asked for other quotes. Oh, you've asked for other quotes. Yeah, I, I okay. have to listen to other quotes. I just only got one response. So yeah. I can keep doing that and maybe hopefully we'll get more. Maybe just see if we can get a couple more. And if we don't, then that's fine. But yeah. I think we have time Easy to wait. Time. Right? Yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Eco main grant application letter. Um, this is from... Amber's forwarding these on. Yeah. She said she went to their board of directors meeting and they handed these out to a lot of the eco main reps. Um, they're looking for grants from the state, I think. Um, but it's no obligation of the town to do anything other than they've drafted up a letter that says you approve of them getting a grant because we work with eco main. So that's all that is. Um, you guys can sign it or not sign it, doesn't matter. But Amber called me today and explained to me. Um, what that was about, and that um, they are looking to have these by the 16th. So your next meeting is not until the 17th. So I wanted to show you guys some more guys today. Let's see what we want to do with it. What's basically says that we like working with Eco Main and yeah. they do a good job. So yeah. I read them earlier yeah. today. Yeah, tonight. They're a pretty impressive company, really. She said it was an amazing meeting. It was really informative. Yes. She was already cracking my knuckles at the office. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I I make a motion that we sign and support. Okay. Yeah. This. I second that. Any discussion? Dave? No. No. I didn't talk. All in favor? All right. Um, okay. I'm going to take a quick start. Oh, okay. All right. New business. Yeah. All right. Oh, I guess so. We'll be able to talk about Jesse's going to the bathroom. Say we're taking a quick start. Might as well. Should we get that done now before? Yes. Oh, that'd be so good. Mm -hmm. That's so smart. Oh, do you need No, it's just you. Do we, is there a place for us to sign those? I think there has to be a contract yep. number. We prove the contract, and Gina asked to do her thing. Uh, now we review those. Yeah. So she said, I was like, enough. So I said, you, and then I said, Brad, and then stop it. Brenda, <laughs> like, come on now. You were about to. The soccer game at 10. Oh. Tonight? Yep. What? 
Like you're playing in it? Or yeah, you're... one of them. Okay. Or is that XL? Yeah. I'll let you go first. Enjoy some freaking co ed league. That's what Shauna plays on Wednesdays, I think. <laughs> I was like, I have never played soccer, nor will I be. I am good. Yeah. All right. All right. We don't. We don't. In the interest of transparency. Yeah. Transparency. Yeah. 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 Um, one was, so they're using very heavy, large, bulky storage uh, equipment um, while we're doing this process. And we want to know, is it okay to store it on town property somewhere and where that is? I guess they've used behind where, the fire department where, report. Who, who's cutting? The tree guy. I can't remember the name. Is it Gerard? Is it Gerard? Yeah. The, the, the tree company that's cutting for the cemetery. Okay. This is Larry Blanchett. Oh. Six at gmail.com. All right. Well. But they're talking about the, the tree cutting at the cemetery. So Jeanette's working on getting their certificates of liabilities and whatnot. Um, but they have a question here on where to put your equipment. So when they're doing the tree work, instead of carting that equipment back and forth, they just want to put it somewhere. So it could be behind the fire department. It could be at maybe the sand and salt shed. I'm not really sure. I'm just throwing that idea. What are they storing? Yeah, that was my how big? Yeah, how big? big bucket trucks or or grain? Or... So it says tree work will begin the last week of January. Everything will be done within a few weeks. It's going to be a very extensive project. We'll be bringing in high lifts, cranes, and other equipment. You will get our full interrupted attention for the duration of the project in this really major storm. Is that yeah. Yeah, he's been doing it for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and this is going to be all over town. So it's going to be coming from Wells, Mill, and Berwick. Um, they hope that they can utilize the space to temporarily store the parking equipment for duration of the project rather than driving all that equipment daily. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they asked if they could store it at the town hall. I don't know if there's no room in the yeah, right. that. There's not room there. Yeah, but he said, possibly behind the fire station, and there was a park there to the town. Up to the chief. Yeah. That's the chief. And now I'll ask him to yeah. Thursday night. Okay, I mean, I can reply to this email. Yeah, just tell him. We'll find him we'll something. Yeah. They, they could put it in a saver for him. Yeah, you gotta yep. plow it for them, right? Or can yeah, they plow? plow it anyway? Yeah, keep it open. So, right, whatever's more convenient yeah. for them. And it's safer there, you know. Yeah, out of would, the way of the fire station. Would it be helpful? Would it at the salt shed. Right. Would it be helpful if we knew the extent of what they were burning? How many pieces of equipment, roughly? Yeah, he just said high lifts, cranes, and other equipment. Right. So Two of each, time. five of each, seven of each. That's like an empty lot, right? Well, I have all my stuff in there, but there's plenty of room in there, and it's you know, I lock it up so they can they can have it safe, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah the other ones are all yeah. less chance of liability if something happened over at the fire station. Yeah. Or, you know. Somebody okay. responded to a call, sliding into. I'm in favor of that. Yeah, what's wrong? Was that a motion? Sure. I'll second it. Off, off of Dave to, for the to allow yeah. them to store off Davis Road. Coordinate with Brad. All right, uh, all of you. Uh, for them the Davis Road. What do you think, Dave? Off from the Davis Road. Uh, yep. Sounds like a good place, is any? Okay. Do you want me to ask him? Like, what's that called? Where's Mr. Rusty? That came from Paul. We should just type up the appointment. We could oh sign God. right now. She okay. took that point. My, my last oh, we'll sign that. We already agreed to well, it. Yeah. Those are Polly's. Those are our yeah. Polly's. Paul. Paul. Sorry. Um, 
I just want to apologize to the board if I was less than professional, but I'd also like to address the uh, trail master of the snowmobile club um, about your membership. Um, the last time when we had this discussion, you came up and apologized to us for the way your uh, membership acted. And I think tonight uh, it was another example of that. Um, and I, you know, I know I'm a public person, public official, and, I, and I'll take it, but I won't take somebody to get in my face. And I think it was completely out of line. And I'd like you to go and talk to your president, your vice president about that. It's hard to be objective when you have hostility like that and putting things out there that we are coming after you guys. I've just about had enough of it. And I know so it's correct. Well, 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 I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. Because we were accused. Two of us were accused of being former members and that it was a personal vendetta. Not at, not at all. Okay. I've got enough sweat and blood in there. I know exactly what's going on over there. So I would appreciate in future times that the club, you speak to your membership, that they act appropriately, please. Okay, first, I didn't apologize for how anyone acted. I apologize for how the meeting went. Yeah. I have no control over what people say. Yeah. People have their own voice. Yeah. I'm not their caretakers. Yeah. Obviously, this is a heated situation for a lot of people in town. Yes, things got a little crazy the last meeting and tonight, but I'm not going to take responsibility for that because I'm not asking you to take responsibility. I'm asking you as a as a as a member of the um, uh, of the club. You're an officer of the club to bring that back to the club. And, and I don't know what you're talking about about things getting brought up and saying that you guys are after us. I, I, I'll, There's a I, lot of things I, I've said. Nothing like that. I it didn't say. I did not say. You said looking it. Looking at getting rid of I, some property, and one of the snowmobile club is one of those properties. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to get into debate. I'm just going to apologize to the board and to the members of the of the staff here. And uh, but I won't take anybody getting in my face. Plain and simple. Well, you shouldn't. So I'm not I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take that either. Yeah. Thank you. Any other new business? No. All right. Ooh, I can't make a motion. Uh, make a motion. We go into executive session. One uh, MRSA 405E attorney slash legal matters. I'll second that motion. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Even though I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, he, he can stay on, right? Yeah. There's nobody else on. No. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for pulling them together. Are you guys done? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Nah. Yeah. I don't know. Until we get the. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, you want to come up here and do that? Thank you. Millie. Jessica. Nice to meet you. you as well. Thank you. I come to all meetings.